All right, hello, welcome back to Calculator Fun, Disassembling Calculators, which is fun. I insist, it's fun. I assure you, it's fun. Uh, with Rob. So, when last we left, um, this is part 12, in part 11, um, I was having a great deal of difficulty removing the pin off of the Leibniz wheel uh, part. So, as you can see, I have actually been able to remove the pin. And this is not the pin, but it's like this. And basically what I had to do was take a mill, which was um, an eighth of an inch across, and drill into the pin right here. And then I was able to drill into the hole. Now, the problem is that the that the pin was actually smaller than an eighth of an inch. So now I have a hole that's actually bigger than the original pin. Um, originally also I had problems because I had broken off both a mill and a drill bit into the hole, uh, which made things uh, a lot more difficult than they should have been. Um, I should have just been able to drill out one side and then tap on it. Um, to get it out, but apparently the drill broke and then you can't really tap on that. So I had to drill both ends out. Um, the mill also, I don't know if you can see, the mill has a chip in it now. So this end mill is now useless. Um, luckily it only chipped, it didn't actually break in the hole. Um, so anyway, that's what it takes to take out 90 year old pins. Um, if they don't come out immediately, um, you're going to have to suffer. Now, before I actually remove the part, what we're going to do is make a new, uh, get a new taper pin for this. And to do that, I have these tools, which I believe I showed last time. Um, these are taper reamers. They have a taper on them. And I have the associated pins that go along with it. So, pins um, in different sizes. I have four different sizes, as I said before. Oh, and these are my, um, these are my tools that I use to um, put into the taper pin hole and whack with a hammer. Whack with a hammer. So, um, they, they all used to look like, uh, they all used to look like the one over here, um, but they broke off at various points, um, which is actually quite convenient because now they're different sizes. Whoopee, so the original was a sixteenth of an inch. Sixteenth of an inch, okay. Um, and the important point is that they are flat on the end because if they are not flat, if they're pointy or rounded, by banging on them, uh, you're basically going to um, deform the, the taper pin instead of actually pushing on it, so that's bad. All right, so um, here's my end mill. It's useless, so I'm going to put it aside and make sure that I throw it out because it's useless. Okay, uh, let's see what we've got. Right, so, so the question is, what size taper pin do I use? Um, these obviously look too small, but I've got number, number four, number three, and number two, which is the largest. So clearly, what I need to do is take one of these pins and take the fat end and see if it fits through that eighth of an inch hole that I drilled in. So, no, no, that's good. That means that this is a candidate. So let me take a number three taper pin, which is the next size down and let's see if I can fit the fat end through. If I can fit the fat end through, that means that the pin, yeah, okay. So I can fit the fat end through, which means that this pin is too small. So it's going to be a number two um, taper pin, and I have a number two reamer right over here. And what the reamer will do is it will ream out the hole so that it matches the taper on the pin and then the pin can just stick in there. So I'm going to attach this to my manual tool. So this is just basically a manual operation. Now um, I need to 
think about which end is the small end. Um, so I'm pretty sure that this is going to end up being the, being the large end. Yeah, and this is the small end because the pin can't fit with its thin end through here very easily. So I just take the taper pin reamer and I just gently start turning it in the hole. Just turning it. And the idea is that I just want to ream it out so that I get a nice smooth taper. And this might take a little bit of doing because um, originally the hole was uh, quite, quite small. So maybe what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a smaller reamer like um, this come out. Hmm, that's funny. Okay. My reamer is stuck. There we go. Uh, so let's put this back in so I know what size it is. That's really important to know what size it is. So let's see, I can start with a uh, let me, tr let me just see if a number three will work. Yeah, if number three does go through. How about a number four? Yeah, number four goes through all the way. So I'm going to start with a number four to fatten up the hole. back together again. This tool is called a four-in-one pin vise. And basically you can use it with anything that has um, a square end on it, like a tap. This is essentially a tap. go. So I'm just going to put this in. And I'm just rotating and pushing gently at the same time. Now I'll pull it out, blow on the hole. Keep going. hole is looking nice and smooth, which of course it should be. Okay, so. All right. So that's kind of good. Um, so let's see, this was, see this was a number four. So I'm wondering why wouldn't a number four pin work? Um, probably because the fat end, probably because this is even fatter than the fat end on the pin, is what I'm guessing. So, but just in case, let me take a number four. This is number four, right? Yeah. A number four and stick it through. And yeah, the, see, the fat end is just sort of in there. So that's no good. So let's put it back, and I hope this isn't boring. Probably is. Oh well. Okay, so let me graduate up to a number three. All right. Okay, so the reamer doesn't even come out the other end at this point. So I do have to... Uh, It's probably, these things probably weren't meant to be done, to be drilled out, actually, with reamers. The reamers are really just to make the holes um, tapered, so they're not really meant to take off a whole lot of material. 
Um, however, ah, there we go. Now the, the end is coming out. Yeah, okay. So really I'm not using this correctly, but uh, it's something. All right, uh, let us see. So that was a number, so this is a number three, and originally I had a number four. Let me just take a number three pin and see if that works. I mean, I've already tested it, right? So, I mean, the fat end goes right into the hole. So obviously that's, that's just not gonna work. So it's gonna have to be a number two. So if I put the pin in right now, um, yeah, it still doesn't go all the way through the hole. Um, and that's because the hole is not big enough. So I'm just going to continue with this reamer. This is the number three reamer. And I'm going to have to use the number two reamer. So now, one of the things you might be asking at this point is why the hell am I bothering taking this thing apart when there's probably nothing wrong with it? Um, well, one, okay, this is an educational video, so, you know, I am going to take it apart. Maybe the thing that you, maybe the calculator that you have really actually won't need taking apart. Um, but I would like to take it apart just so that we can see the structure. Um, number two, um, I really would like to clean um, this whole thing. Okay, look, here. See, this, this Leibniz wheel is sticking. That's no good. So, okay, well, now it's not sticking. Now, it's possible that, you know, just by putting a little bit of oil in there, um, I could get these things not to stick. But it would be kind of nice to know, um, just for the purposes of this video, exactly what this thing is made out of. Um, so that's why I'm going through so much trouble to take this stuff apart. Um, just to show you, you know, what exactly is involved um, and, and to basically do the, the, I guess, the hardest thing possible. So, oh, um, this reamer is done, I guess. So let's go ahead and, okay, why aren't you coming out now? There we go. So, that was a number three reamer. Let us now go up to the final one, which is a number two reamer. So if you're going to get reamers, I suggest that you get a whole bunch. Um, I have number two through five, um, five being the smallest one. Um, and in taper pins, I have also uh, two, three, four, and five. Um, so, I guess, I, I don't think for this calculator you're going to really need anything bigger than a number two. Um, but if you are going to get taper pins, um, just go for the whole set. Why not? Uh, taper reamers. Did I say taper pins? Probably. All right, so here we go. We are now reaming with a number two reamer. thing is turning on me, and I wonder why. Why is this thing turning on me? It's possible that this insert needs to be just a little bit bigger. And there are inserts in the back, which is really convenient. Uh, let's see. Nope, this is the largest insert. I'm going to keep that here. Put this in. See if I can tighten this up a little bit. Hmm. Okay. Well, this tool is plastic, so. Well, if I needed to, I could get a, um, an actual tapping, um, it's like this T-handle thing, if I had to. Um, but for now, so far it seems to be holding up okay. 
I do see uh, metal dust coming out, so at least we aren't reaming, which is a good thing. So, um, and what I want is for the end of the reamer to come out, and that should tell me that uh, the pin would now fit, because I think that the end of the, the pin is actually the same size as the end of the reamer, I think. I could be wrong. Okay, so, let's go. Now you might be saying, well, what's the big deal that, you know, the fat end of the pin is actually smaller than the larger, the large hole? Well, the thing is that um, you want the pin to touch both sides of the part when it goes through the, through the axle um, so that when the axle turns, the pin isn't just stressed on one side. It's, it's uh, the, the force on it is evenly distributed on both sides of the pin. Um, so that's why I'm taking so much trouble here to make sure that um, to make sure that the pin can go all the way through. And I guess it's not really that important for the pin to go completely through. Um, boy, this, this doesn't even go through the axle. Um, I've got a, a little ways to go. Um, I'm wondering if I shouldn't just drill a larger hole through. Um, but let's just uh, keep trying. Yeah, the problem is that the, the reamer is... Um... Okay, so I'm gonna go get a T-handle um, for this, um, which should hold on to the reamer a little better than this plastic tool. Um, it's unfortunate. I mean, this tool is kind of, kind of nice. Oops. Come out, please. Thank you. All right, so I'm going to go get a, uh, a T-handle um, tool, uh, and I will be back through the magic of video editing. Okay, hello, I am back. So I have a T-handle and the reamer. So this thing should just go right in there and there. Now this is metal, so this is going to be a lot better. All right, fat end. Yeah, okay, there we go. Now I can make some progress. So. So why don't I just drill this out? I don't know, Maybe I'm stubborn. I'm certainly making progress. Oh, mm -hmm. Just about, let's see, yeah, the tip is just about coming out of the end. So, ah, uh, there we go. Now we're making great progress. Okay. There we go. So, all right. It's probably good enough. So, let's see if this actually works. Not really. I need to ream some more. I guess the end of this is not actually um, bigger or the same size as the actual taper pin. So, that's okay. We're just going to ream some more. my reamer through all the parts. Okay, let's see how that does. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that looks good. 
Um, I am not going to actually get the pin to go all the way through um, because if anybody has to take this apart, I would like to give them a nice, um, uh, a nice embedded surface to to uh, go into. So um, yeah, I think that's going to be good. Um, well, okay, I may in fact have to, hmm, I may in fact have to ream it out a little more because there is uh, a bit of a gap between the pin and the surface of the part. Um, a bit of a gap. Let's see if I can just ream it out just a little more. It would be nice to have that embedded surface. So. Yeah, see, the thing is that you want the reamer to... Um, if, if the pin doesn't touch the end of the part, it means that the reamer didn't ream um, the entire surface. So... Alright, let's see how that works. Dust. Okay, so here we go. Yeah. Okay, that's perfect. Okay, so uh, I do have a bit of the um, end of the pin sticking out. Um, so maybe that's okay, so that they can you know press down maybe with an arbor press. Um, so I suppose in theory I could. Um, ream out the hole a little more so that this um, this um, non-flat end, this pointed end, um, is sitting just above the surface and then I can cut off the small end, oops, the small end of the pin. Where did that pin go? It just sort of shot out. Um, doesn't really matter, I've got a whole bunch of, uh, a whole bunch of them, but still it's kind of annoying for that to happen. Um, so, yeah, I will probably um, just ream this out. Should I ream this out a little more? Um, yeah. So the, the thing that I was talking about was um, if I have the, the pointy fat end uh, sticking out a lot, um, well, that might interfere with something else, and then I'd have to cut it off. But if I cut it off, then it won't be clear to the next person who comes around which, which end is the fat end. So that's why I am going to ream this out some more um, so that the fat end goes in a little more um, and then when I install the pin I'm just going to cut the small end of the pin off um, not flush but flat so that they have at least a surface to push on um, okay so all right so that's enough um, of that do is I will take a number two, another number two, because the, the first one went on the floor somewhere. Okay, the, the more juvenile of you will probably be um, laughing at this point because of all those double entendres about number twos on the floor. Okay, so there we go. All right, um, so the next thing that I'm going to do is take off this part, and um, again, it's important to note the orientation of the actual part. So you can see that this is some sort of a cam surface, and uh, the radius of the cam is smaller on, on this side than it is on this side. Um, that is the small end of the pin. In addition, all these uh, teeth on the Leibniz wheel are essentially opposite uh, the small end of the cam. So, let us attempt to take the cam out. Uh, and to do that, I'm just going to take a screwdriver and um, just sort of pry gently against it. Um, but it should just come right out because there's now nothing holding it to the axle. Or there shouldn't be. Better not be. to remove this. Uh, well, what I could do is just take a surface like this and just sort of, I don't know, bang on it maybe. Yeah, it's coming out pretty, pretty easy. 
easily. Well, not so easily. It's at least it's at least loose now. All right, so there we go. Okay, there it comes. And there we go. It's also important to note that the hub is on the outside. Hub. Okay, um, before we had a bag 13, um, which has a part, a pin, and a thing. Um, so that means that what I'm going to do now to keep the pin along with this, so that we know which pin goes with which uh, part, um, I'm going to start a new bag. I'll call it 13A. 13A. Uh, serial number. Seven, seven, three, three, nine. Okay, let's open this. The weird thing about these bags is that they sometimes have a tendency to rip on the top. I don't know why. Okay, so there we go. Bagged. By the way, this this is the uh, piece of metal that was um, trapped or stuck um, in the uh, in the original taper pin hole. There's um, a tiny segment of drill bit in there and a tiny segment of end mill, um, all in a little shell of taper pin. So um, I think I'll throw that out because it just makes me angry and frustrated. All right, so what's next? We have this part, um, this thing. So again, this needs to come out. Uh, so. It probably needs to be pressed out. So let's press you out. Try to. Uh, let's see, will my little tool fit? No. I guess it would be handy to have a bunch of these. Um, instead, I could probably use this. That seems to sort of work out. Um, and then hammer it a little bit. So, there we go. There we go. Okay. Ah, okay, so here we have a washer. And again, as we usually do, we will measure the washer. Just in case there happens to be other washers and parts and things. So the outer diameter of the washer is 0.845 inches. The thickness of the washer is 0.042. That goes in bag 13A. All right, and then we have this part, which comes out. Okay. This part has a hub. Um, the hub is actually on the inside. It has a, a kind of um, an indented surface that makes it kind of like a pulley. Um, and I think it's just, yeah. It looks like it was just a, it was a press fit into this part, so that's how they put it together. Um, so, okay. And the hub goes on the inside. So that goes into bag 13A. All right. So, what have we got left? All right. So, here we go. We have what appeared to be uh, what appears to be a pin, and I'm looking at it from the side, and I'm wondering: Are the ends the same size or not? Because if they're not the same size, then it is a taper pin, which makes everybody frustrated and upset. So, I'm going to measure the one end. So it's 0.119, and I'm going to measure the other end. It's about 0.118. So I suspect that this is some sort of. Let me measure that again. So this is. 117 and what appears to be 
maybe 0.122. So this could be, maybe, I don't know if it's a paper pin, but if it is, this end is the small end. I'm just going to tap on it, see what happens. Nothing's happening. Okay. So this may be one of those things where I have to... Oh, wait. Is there a... Is there a wire on this or something that's holding this together? No. Doesn't look like it. I can look at the other ones. look kind of taper pin like so that's kind of unfortunate that these are all taper pins um, so let's see where is my little taper pin tool thing yeah this is even worse because this isn't actually round it's it's um it's got these indentations, which I really don't want to damage, because that would be no fun. Okay, let's just see what happens. I'll bang on the end. Not much, but that's of course typical of taper pins. But not much happens when you bang on them. Uh -huh. So this end is one twenty. This end. It also seems to be the same size. So hmm. let me take a look at this other one. It's in the middle of these. And I can't get in there to measure very well. There we go. Looks like 0.118. And it's so hard to tell because we're dealing with thousandths of an inch. So, let's see, what should I do? Well, I really want to take these out. Um, okay, so I'm going to go off and experiment with these. We're coming up on about 35 minutes. So, what I'm going to do is um, just uh, see if I can measure this a little more accurately, maybe. Uh, look at it under a, uh, a microscope to see if there's anything holding it in. Um, and... Um, I guess I'll be back the next time with perhaps some information on how to take this thing out. So until that time arrives, uh, that's the end of episode 12 of Calculator Fun Disassembling Calculators. Bye-bye. <laughs>